Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white tokens deck titled Harmony, as we're playing the full playset of Harmonious Archon, a 6-mana 4-5 flyer, saying non-Archon creatures have base, power and toughness 3-3, and when Harmonious Archon enters a battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white human creature tokens, which will of course turn into 3-3s three for as long as Harmonious Archon is on the battlefield, and Harmonious Archon also happens to be the only creature in the deck, so we're guaranteed to find it if we target one of our many tokens with either Transmogrify or with Luka, Copper Coat Outcast, minus 2 ability, so we've got plenty of access to our 6 mana Mythic Rare, which also just plays nicely with our many tokens, since we get to upgrade our 1-1 tokens into 3-3s. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 2 mana we've got some cheap interaction with 2 copies of Glass Casket, can exile a creature with convert mana cost 3 or less, so it can even take care of some high toughness creatures like Lovestruck Beast that don't typically die to our 3 damage burn spells, and one of those is Fire Prophecy which deals 3 damage to a creature, and then we can put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library, and if we do we get to draw a card, so it can help smooth out our draws, maybe put an additional copy of Archon on the bottom of our library, so we've got more copies in the deck to find with Transmogrify or Luca, and then we've got some cheap token makers with two copies of Forbidden Friendship, makes a 1-1 red dinosaur with haste and a 1-1 white human soldier creature token, and four copies of Birth which can search up a basic planes on the first chapter to help us hit our land drops, on the second chapter makes an 0-4 wall token that can protect our planeswalkers and later be targeted by Transmogrify or Luca's minus two, and then gains two life on the final chapter as well. We've got Omen of the Sun as an instant speed token maker, makes two 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens and also gains two life, can also be sacrificed to scry two. And then we've got two copies of Banishing Light since we don't get access to Skyclave Apparition, since we want Archon to be the only creature in the deck, but Banishing Light just gives us an all-purpose removal spell at three mana. Then at 4 mana we've got more token makers, with Elspeth, Sun's Nemesis, can make two 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens with the minus 2, so it can activate it twice, and then the minus 1 can pump up our tokens as well, giving them plus 2 plus 1, and then can also be escaped out of the graveyard, so also shines against the various mill decks, since we potentially get access to a free Elspeth out of the graveyard. And then of course our four copies of Transmogrify do need to make sure that Transmogrify actually resolves. So if our opponent tries to kill our creature that we're targeting in response, then we won't get access to our Archon. So you usually want to cast this when the opponent is tapped out. And then we've got two copies of Outlaw's Merriment as another fun token maker. At the beginning of our upkeep, at random, we either get a 3-1 Warrior with Trample and Haste, a 2-1 Cleric with Lifelink and Haste, or a 1-2 Rogue that when it enters a battlefield deals 1 damage to any target and has Haste as well. Then at 5 mana, besides our two copies of Luka, which is mainly going to minus 2 to turn our tokens into Archons, can also plus 1 to potentially draw into Archon, although it's not super likely. We also have two copies of Elspeth, Conqueror's Death, as a nice removal spell that can also potentially return Archon or one of our planeswalkers from the graveyard to the battlefield. Now we do have a lot of cards that would synergize nicely with Yorion, so we could potentially increase the number of cards in our library up to 80, so we can play Yorion as companion, so that's definitely worth considering, since we still potentially get to play 4 copies of Luka to make up for the fact that we have fewer of those effects in an 80 card deck. And then taking a look at our mana base, of course we've got the full playset of Castle Ardenvale, a nice mana sink to make 1-1 tokens, as well as 2 copies of Emiria's Call, which for 7 mana can make 2 4-4 four, four Angel Warrior creature tokens, with flying and also makes our creatures indestructible until our next turn and then also two copies of castle Embereth, which can pump up our tokens giving them plus one plus oh until end of turn and then some dual lands with four temple of triumph four of the red white pathway two fabled passage and then plenty of planes to search up with birth as well as three basic mountains so that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the play and yes this hand seems okay facing a yurion deck And do I want another castle? I guess I do. Don't have double red yet in case we draw Luka, but shouldn't be too much of an issue. So we're opponent on a blue Yorion deck. Blue white. Alright, next one we can already Transmogrify if we want, although it might be better to Elspeth first. Puts Yorion in hand. Going 
going to fight, fight beside me. All right, so we'll see if they want to wipe the board here, or if we get to maybe transmogrify next turn. Could see Skyclave Apparition, Exile, Elspeth. Or Banishing Light. Can also use Conqueror's Death here. Which isn't a bad idea. Although maybe I want to Transmogrify first and then Conqueror's Death can get back Archon if they wipe the board. So let's do that instead. Now they could have their own Elspeth Conqueror's Death, of course. In which case we'll have to wait and see. Instead just hard cast Urion. So this is not going to work out for my opponent. Can Conqueror's Death, Banishing Lights. And then Elspeth can just pump two creatures here, I think. And then my opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand seems nice. Got some early token makers, backed up by Transmogrify. Facing a Temple of Mystery. Alright, so Teamer deck, maybe a ramp deck here, in which case Ugin the Spirit Dragon could be problematic. It's gonna be Prophecy killing the dinosaur. Might see a ramp spell here. And there's Cultivate. So we get to Omen, and then Transmogrify, attack for 6. So our opponent's under a lot of pressure. Let's see if they can recover here. And they cannot. And they explode. Sweet. So a nice aggressive start with turn 4 Transmogrify. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand is not amazing since we're missing a way to make tokens to go with Transmogrify. Although we do have early removal. We'll try it. Temple can maybe help us find a way to make some tokens. And then we're off to the races. Also want to find a second white source now. Bottom a second merriment. And yeah, merriment will make the tokens we need for transmogrify eventually. Opponent also on red-white. Appears to be a cycling deck. No Lurus as companion though. Yeah, I mean, I'll still cast get the Stinger. Another Stinger. And Cycles, Drenith Healer. So not sure what card they're playing in the main deck. That warrants excluding Lurus as Companion. Maybe some more expensive cyclers. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Iron Crack Pyromancer, yeah, that's a good one. Although, doesn't line up great against my Merriment.
Could also decide to transmogrify Pyromancer, just to use it as removal. Alright, so cool interaction. Putting a lifelink counter on Pyromancer so it gains 3 when it deals 3 damage. So, can attack for 2 just to gain 2. I kind of like using Transmogrify on the Pyromancer, to be honest. Although we could just get an Archon in play. Because the Cycling deck's gonna have a lot of random creatures it can hit. Like a Drenith Healer, that wouldn't be all that bad for me. Uh, if I Elspeth, next turn they can kill Elspeth. Whereas if I Transmogrify, I get an Archon in play, they can start killing the tokens. Yeah, you know what, let's just get rid of this Pyromancer. Not a play I've made very often, using Transmogrify on the opponent's creature. Alright, they found a Flourishing Fox. So, definitely could have been worse. Another Pyromancer. Alright, it's gonna cycle, grow the fox and kill my token. Nope, decided to just go face. So... I guess we'll go upstairs. I could make the same play of transmogrifying the Pyromancer. Just send in the life linker this time. Getting Archon in play would be nice. Yeah, I guess we can go Elspeth plus Birth and then next turn Transmogrify. Although it could be bad if they keep up two Cyclers, because then they can use a Paramancer in our turn as well and kill whatever we're targeting. Justice. So not too many cyclers in graveyard yet in case of a zenith flare. Once again, gonna give Pyromancer a lifelink. And just goes face, opponent's not interested in killing my creatures. The one damage, not the best one to get. Alright, Banishing Light, a much cleaner answer for the Pyromancer here, so we'll minus first. I am proud of my so I'll expect a double cycle in response. Now the Flourishing Fox will be a 3-3 as base power with all those plus one counters on it, so still kind of annoying. So, Zenith Flare's not quite lethal yet. Probably target my wall. And I get to gain 3 here as well. Next turn we'll gain 2 off Birth. So don't hate my position. Also have Castle Emberth to pump the team. So I think we should just move to combats, attack, and see what happens. So if they were to Zenith Flare, I guess they would also gain a bunch of life. 3, 7, go up to 18. But I think they would still be pretty dead here. So they might have to kill the Archon. Mm, 
Yep, so that takes out Archon. That's fine. Sadly, Amiria Skull's a sorcery, so couldn't save the Archon here. Bones at 19, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I think they're still dead here to a castle activation. Alright, close one. And showing the versatility of Transmogrify, also being used on the opponent's creature. And yeah, a very original take on the cycling deck with Ironcrank Pyromancer. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with what looks like a fine hand. Probably want to get a plane, so castles untapped. Facing Obosh, the Prey Piercer. So this could be the Teamer ramp deck. As we see a Temple of Mystery. So we're not gonna see any Lotus Cobras that we can kill. Yeah, I'll go for Omen of the Sun here. Over Birth. Try and get this Transmogrify going as soon as possible. Although we might have to birth next turn if we miss our line drop. Yeah, I don't really want to transmogrify when he can potentially stomp with a Bone Crusher Giant. So instead, hit for two, play another Omen. I guess now it is tempting to birth and keep a prophecy. Because then there's a chance that my opponent plays giant, I get to fire prophecy it, and then next turn transmogrify. It's going to be an innkeeper instead. Alright. Still gonna kill the giants. And one omen can probably go. And there's Luca. Hit for three. Next turn we can get another Archon, maybe even two. Could have also killed Innkeeper instead of Giants, since they were going to turn into 3-3s three anyway. But I wanted to kill the larger creature in case they dealt with Archon. Another Innkeeper. Alright, so we're gonna get to draw two here. Good news is Lobster Beast cannot attack. So we've got a few options. I don't hate minus get Archon and then Transmogrify. Get another one. Uh, I guess we can attack first here. And yeah, my opponent has to concede to triple Harmonious Archon, threatening lethal next turn. On to the next one. Uh, 
All right, we're on the draw. This hand might be okay against a creature deck with plenty of early interaction. Prophecy can also put some of these cards on the bottom. If we're up against a control deck, this hand does nothing. I guess we'll take the gamble here. Temple of Malice could still be anything. I'll take an Omen. Or do I? I guess I just want lands as well. Don't have Transmogrify yet to combo with tokens. So maybe I should just be on the lookout for more mana. Meyer Triton. Alright, so is this a red-black escape deck? Looks like it. There's Transmogrify. So I should probably kill this now to avoid a uh, village rights situation. And then I could get rid of Archon, could get rid of Prophecy. I guess we'll get rid of Archon. Alright, Birth is nice. Gives us a land and a token to eventually Transmogrify. Croxa. Can maybe have my Conqueror's Death. Yeah, there's not going to be a ton of creatures to get back. And I like the idea of having some cheaper interaction if needed. So, nothing from our opponents. I guess I'll just birth. Don't want to transmogrify into open mana since it could kill my creature in response. I've got Fire Prophecy available. Cycles of Shredded Sails, which could have destroyed my wall since it's an artifact. So we will see Croxa escaped. So I might have to take a turn off using my glass casket here. And another shredded sail cycled. Alright. Now I could still go for Transmogrify, but then if they kill Archon, we'll have to discard another card to Croxa. Things might get a little bit messy. And we'll get rid of Prophecy. Yeah, let's play it safe. Timurt calls the dead. Finds an ox, which can potentially be escaped as well. And Omen. So does my opponent have any instant speed removal for my wall? They could have Heartless Act. Maybe a Murder Strider. So we could get punished. So I might have to pass and just Omen instead. Yeah. There we see Eliminate, another card they could have had. So yeah, they're definitely holding an instant. Want to keep Banishing Light for an escape creature as opposed to using it on Timurit Calls the Dead. Now at least we can start making tokens.
heartless sacked my 1 1. Opponent just wants to empty their hand since they're planning to escape Ox, I suppose. And eventually we'll transmogrify to get Archon in play. Making a token seems more valuable than scrying. Alright, Luke has a nice one. I think I want to target the wall as opposed to the token, since the token they can also kill with Stomp. Although they might have another removal spell here, we'll see. Yep, Heartless Act in response means no Harmonious Archon. Although next turn we could potentially get two. This seems okay. Stomp finishes off the wall. And is it time to escape Ox? Nope. Opponent still holds on to whatever card they have. Uh, I guess they are one card short, although if they sacked Fabled Passage they would have had enough to escape so that Leads me to believe that they probably have another removal spell in hand here. Which is annoying, since we really want to minus here. I guess I'll still minus Luca. And then I can just end of turn make a token, untap, transmogrify, potentially twice. Yeah, and if it works out, great. Because I'm going to lose my Planeswalker anyway here to my opponent attacking. And Castle seems fine. Alright, so not the ideal outcome, obviously. But next turn we'll have double Archon in play if all goes well. Opponent still not escaping Ox. I'm not sure what's going on here, but I'm not going to play around yet another removal spell. Cycles Footfall Crater. Meyer Triton mills for two. And is it finally time for the Ox to show up? So the game plan here is going to be to attack with Archon and just keep the 3-3s three on defense. Then we can start activating Castle. Could also Banishing Light here, although probably want to save that one. And then I can sack Omen instead. Could also keep one Archon on defense to hold off the other three threes, although I do want to try and close out the game relatively quickly. Maybe I can send in a token as well here, just to trade it off. And we're getting close to double castle activation. So 
So I'm more than happy to trade, although... Who knows, maybe... My opponent's got other planes. Although they're unlikely to kill both of my Archons. I guess they could have a Shadow Skull Smashing, and that would do it. So I do want to trade while I get the chance. And if they can't kill Archon, then we're probably in fine shape anyways. Alright, it's finally time for docks. Feels like they could have escaped it a long time ago. So I actually want to keep a land on top so we can double castle. They probably have removal for one Archon. Only having the one Banishing Light in hand, of course not great if they have a Croxa, but the land in play is also quite valuable with Double Castle Ardenvale. Interesting. Well, Transmogrify and Elspeth are both reasonable. I guess keep Elspeth on top and then I can play Elspeth, make two three threes, And still activate Castle and then turn after. I can maybe transmogrify get another Archon if we need it. Yeah, seems better than pumping my flyers. Heroes, rally to me. Could also banishing light ox. Is that better? Yeah, I guess I don't hate it. Especially if they have a Croxa. They might make me discard it anyway. So Elspeth down. Now, if my opponent doesn't have any other creatures, I could technically try to transmogrify their only blocker here, and if they hit a croc side, would go to the graveyard. But they can still escape an ox, plus they have two cards in hand, so that seems like a bad plan. And then I could trade, or I could just hold my token. I guess we'll trade again, just in case my two Archons disappear overnight. Trading for the Death Toucher seems fine. Alright, so Crone War steals one of them. And that was a hardcast Ox. So points playing the full for Oxen here. So, can escape for six mana, although then I wouldn't be able to transmogrify. So instead I think we castle and then transmogrify the token. And then Archon's fine to attack. And then escaping Elspeth can also pump my flyers, potentially. The life gain from Timurt Calls the Dead actually being relevant. Although if we traded for the zombie, it still would have been the same compared to trading with Mire Triton since they're both zombies. A second, a Chrome War. Alright, this is starting to turn around. So I'm going to be forced to attack with all my creatures here because of the second chapter. 
So what's my play? So if I attack with everyone, they could double block my Archon to kill it. Or they could just ambush my tokens. If I play Elspeth to pump my Archon, I can take out an opposing Archon, but we don't necessarily want to do that since we'll eventually get it back. So I feel like just move to combat, attack, and then play Elspeth to make two tokens is the way to go. Opponent may be afraid of a pump effect. Sadly, no Castle Amberth in play. Alright, so doesn't actually kill my Archon. Double trade. And we'll escape. Me. All right, let's see what happens next. Eliminates a token. And we get our Archon back. Next one will be forced to attack. Opponent's got one card in hand, but still plenty of stuff in the graveyard to escape with 17 cards in graveyard, so... Yeah, close and grindy game here. Do we have any Archons left in the deck? We should have one. And yeah, there's a Shadow Skull smashing for six, killing both of my Archons. That's a setback. And they can still escape Ox. I believe that was the last smashing since we saw two in the graveyard as well. Yep. Elspeth down, although we can escape her once again. I'm going to be forced to attack with my token. Which is gonna suicide into the ox. How many cards does my opponent have left? 12, so they're pretty close to decking too. And a fabled passage, not too useful. Yeah, let's just attack. Can also double castle at instant speed. So we can escape Elspeth and make a token with castle, that seems better. So Archon's back home. Hopefully they're out of removal. Nightmare doesn't kill anything. Although we'll eventually empty my graveyard so I will no longer have an easy time escaping Sun's Nemesis. Croxon's gonna deal three. And only four cards remain in graveyard. Alright, so... Can double activate castle. Elspeth probably just wants to make more tokens. And then do we attack. They get to have a good block with Ox. If they have instant speed removal for Archon, it's kind of a disaster if I send in the tokens, so I think I should play it safe. 
Although then again, if they had removal for Archon, they probably would have used it before playing Elspeth's Nightmare. Make two tokens. Heroes, rally to me. And I uh, guess we'll play out the land here. Alright. Elspeth's Nightmare versus Elspeth Sons Nemesis. Quite flavorful. So, not enough to escape another Ox. Seven cards in library remain. Can probably figure out what they have in hand based on seeing their entire deck. Another Crone War. Alright. It's gonna steal Archon. Although it is tapped. Croxa attacks. So we'll take three. And do we want to block? Opponents at three. If I take it down to six, can we die somehow? How many stomps have they used? All of them. It doesn't seem like they would have any burn spells necessarily. Again, there's a risk that they kill the Archon. We lose the effect that turns our tokens into 3-3s. Three but even so, my opponent's at 3. Although I'll probably have lethal no matter what here. Alright. I guess we'll play it safe. Mire Triton. Alright. Five cards remaining in library. And then they can escape Croxa once again to have an extra blocker. But then they're going to be tapped out and still dead on board. And an Outlaw's Merriment just in time here. Found two tokens. GG's. Can't even escape Elspeth again. Alright. Well, that was quite a marathon of a game. But uh, Elspeth escaped a few times. Definitely putting in a lot of work. Alright, so Red-White Harmony, pretty fun way to build around Harmonious Archon, and as I've mentioned in the introduction, you can always try to build an 80-card version, so you can play Yorion as Companion, which has natural synergy with a lot of cards in the deck. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.